Hi, I'm John McLaurin with Advanced Voting Solutions. We're out of Dallas, Texas, and here in Cook County to show our win vote system to the uh, voting public and to the county officials in D.D. What we'd like to show you today is the actual win vote system. The win vote system is a touch screen system that allows the voter, without the advent of a card or activation device of any kind, to simply come up to the unit, touch the button that says touch here to start, and vote their ballot. In addition to being an accurate, reliable, and secure system, it has a number of features that are really important to the, the voting public, such as ease of use, simplicity of the ballot, for voters with cognitive difficulties, a real good approach to making this as easy as possible and as unintrusive on the voters as possible. Let me show you the unit itself. The WinVote unit comes in a voting booth. It's a lightweight, nine-pound unit that can be used curbside, or be placed in the, on a table, or in the case of a voter in a wheelchair, for example, can be lifted up and simply placed in their lap. It's a very intuitive system for all voters. The voter walks up to the voting unit, and all they have to do after they've registered at the precinct to vote is touch here to start. It's a very intuitive system in that regard. So the voter would simply walk up to the voting booth, touch here to start, and up comes the ballot. In this case, we're showing a Zoom ballot, which is one race per page. The idea of this is not only is it very simple to understand, we've got one race, we simply touch on the voter's name, the candidate's name, and it clearly indicates how the voter is voting, but it also allows the voter, prevents the voter from overvoting. We can't, if it says vote for one, we can't vote for two, but we can change our mind. We can deselect that voter, that, that candidate, and choose another. And as soon as we've chosen the, 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 the candidate of our choice, notice that the header is flashing but that when we select a candidate, in this case vote for one, it uh, selects the candidate and it stops flashing. And then we move to the next race. And so all we to, to go to the next race, we simply touch the next button and the next race comes up. And we vote on that race if we'd like to. And we go to the next race. At any time we can go backwards and review our races or go forward and skip races if we choose, if we have no interest in voting on that particular race. In this case, I'm gonna vote a write-in ballot and when I touch write in, it gives me the option to write in the candidate of my choice. My name is John McLaurin, so I'm going to put in my name, John, M-C-L-A-U-R-I-N. And when I put enter, it says, are you sure you want John McLaurin in? I sure do. And when I put my name in, it actually shows up on the candidate list. So then I go on to the next. And suppose this one, this one is a vote for two. Well, maybe I don't want to vote for all of them. I'll just vote for this guy in this case and go on to the next. And here's a referendum. Do you have to vote on every race? You do not. Do you have to vote on any of them? You, if you just want to show up to the polls and say you were there to vote and don't like any of those guys, that's perfectly all right as well. So we'll skip one or two races. And then we come to what's called by the HAVA law called second chance voting. HAVA requires this with the new federal legislation. And this is what this screen indicates. This is giving you a second chance to go back and review all of the choices you've made. For example, up here at the Sheriff of Nottingham race, I voted for Little John. And down here at the county fair, no selection was made. So let's say I want to go back, and when I touch that particular race, it goes immediately back to that very specific race, allows me to make a choice, and when I hit return, it shows now that I voted for that race and what I have. And this is second chance voting. It gives you a summary page. And when we, do you have to vote every race? No, you do not. So when we go to the next button, here again is a clear indication of what the voter is supposed to do. Obviously, if I touch the vote button, it's going to cast my ballot. But I do have also a third chance, which is to touch the back button. It'll bring me right back if I'm not sure. I want to make one more chance. And if I like that, okay. I do want to go ahead and vote for this candidate as well, because this is a vote for two. I'm going to return. Yep, that's the way I want it. I don't want to vote on that race at all, as in this case. And when I hit the cast button, again, it's a very clear, unambiguous indication. Your ballot has been cast. Thank you for voting. The good news about this system, I'm going to set this down now. The good news about this system is not only is it easy to use, it has a complete audit trail built into it. It also has the application of the voter verifiable receipt, which is required by Illinois law. We have an onboard printer in the unit, which when we use the onboard uh, verifiable receipt application, this printer prints out a receipt right out through the top of the printer cover and we give that to the voter who reviews that before they cast their final ballot and then that goes that stays at the precinct.
that receipt stays at the precinct. Auditability wise, we not only have that printer to print out an audit trail of the ballots that have been cast that day and the election itself and all the activities that happened. We have that printable version. We also have an electronic version that allows us to review everything that's happened to this ballot station from the time it was originally programmed for the election right through the final audit and the canvassing of the election. As far as security is concerned, these are standalone systems. They're not connected in any way to any other unit in the precinct. What's done on this unit is exclusive to this unit. What's ballots cast are exclusive to this unit. And from a, a security and audibility case as well, when that ballot is cast, when we hit the vote button, it stores that information in two separate locations within the system, and one of them is removable so that if, I, if anything happened or damage occurred to the unit as far as its uh, reliability is concerned, I can remove those votes from that unit and store that information as well. As concerning the reliability of the system, Again, they're, they're standalone, they have a battery that operates them during the day, they're being charged all day long by electrical current coming right out of a regular 110 outlet, but in case the, the power went off on election day, the voter would not interfere with voting whatsoever because they're operating on a ballot, or excuse me, on the battery all day long. I believe that addresses all of the issues that we had on our, on our list today. Um, the whole system, as far as the poll workers are concerned, weighs just over 22 pounds. As we mentioned earlier, the unit itself only weighs 9 pounds, just under 9 pounds. It has ADA capabilities. We have the ability to we have the ability to use headphones with the system that plug into any unit, so they're all ADA capable. The unit, again, is called the Wind Run, provided by Advanced Voting Solutions out of Dallas, Texas. And what is the smart card? Oh, the smart card allows the voter, if we did not use the wireless activation of the unit, we can use a smart card to activate the unit. It's actually our backup method. Most of the systems that you'll see in, in the direct record electronics or touchscreen systems require the voter to learn some kind of device to activate the unit, like a smart card. We don't require that. As you noticed earlier, the voter simply comes up to the unit and touches here to start. It's a very simple, intuitive operation. But if the laws change and they require an activation device or require the polling judge activate the unit from the voter, then we have a smart card activation as a backup method. Let me go back to when you said it's a wireless activation. So it's activated by something else that's wireless activated? And, and within the precinct at the poll registration table, we would come to sign in the A through K, the L through Z, sign the poll register. At that location, we have the ability to activate these units independently of everything in the preset. And all it does is say, bring up for Judy, for example, ballot style one, and bring up for Roy ballot style three, maybe. So that when you walk up, all you do is touch here to start, and up comes your particular unique ballot style that we know is right for you because of your indication on the poll register. This is what precinct you're from, what school district, what congressional district, that type of information. If there's a unique ballot style just for you and the people who live in your area. So once I, once I visit the table and register that I'm here to vote that day, then they activate that machine for me? Just for you. Okay. And then you, after you voted, it goes into a dormant state. You can't sit there and vote over and over and over again. It goes into a dormant state until we activate or the poll manager activates it for the next vote, which might be a different ballot style. And there might be four or five different ballot styles in a precinct, or maybe 20 or 30 different ballot styles in a precinct in a primary election. And then at the end of the day, how are all of those votes that are cast in this machine transferred to the big pile? Really, that's a great question. How do we get the individual votes that were cast here into the precinct total? And then how do we get the precinct total into the county total? We can also wirelessly pull the information from this unit at the end of the day, transmit it right over to the central unit within the precinct, and it'll accumulate from all the units simultaneously the end results. And as you saw earlier, it has a printer on here. Automatically, these units, when we close the polls, will print out the results from their individual units. And then from this control unit, it will print out all of the results from that particular precinct, giving us precinct totals. And then, depending on, um, any, you can use any machine to do this. At the end of the day, if your, your state and your county allow it, we can transmit those results by modem right to the election central office. Or we can do that manually by taking the one unit that has accumulative totals at the end of the day. And one of the great things about the auditability and, and, and security of the system is, even though
though I've transmitted results from the precinct to the election office on election night, I can also do that manually. I can in take the cumulative results out of the one unit and take that into the elections office. Or, or if I had to, I always have the audit of every individual ballot cast on these that I can always regenerate. In case we had a recount, in case we had a question or a challenged election, we still have the individual results on every individual machine. This is the voting unit. That's the so, advanced voting solutions, win vote system. What you're looking at here Thank is you. the actual voting feature um, because this is Oops. actually an activation. You just charge them from one to the other here. You don't see other days Hi, I'm Barry Heron, Director of Sales for Diebold Election Systems. We're here participating in this vendor evaluation program for the city of Chicago and Cook County. Diebold is the leader in the implementation of set stream voting today as we have achieved tremendous results in the last two to two and a half years. We're here showing this technology to the city and county. Our technology is a touchscreen based system. Each unit is standalone, meaning that it's not networked, nor is it connected to the internet. So there's total security features in, involved with our technology. The only connectivity to each of the voting stations at the precinct is the power source outlet that's plugged into the AC power. The units can be daisy chained together for purposes of providing power. Each unit has a built-in battery, which will last for four to five hours of continuous voting. <clears throat> the system has been installed in the state of Georgia, the state of Maryland, Alameda County, Los Angeles County as a user, and many counties in between. We have approximately 50,000 50, units in place in the country today. That's far in excess of any other single vendor, so we're very proud of our track record. We bring a very user-friendly, a very user-accessible voting system to the marketplace, and I'd like to have an opportunity to demonstrate that for you. system is a pure touch screen, meaning the voter touches the screen to record their choices. It's initiated by the voter inserting a voter access card, which contains the voter's ballot information only. There is no attachment to the individual voter once the card is created. The voter selects any available touch screen in the precinct as all ballot styles are housed in each unit. This card needs to be created. The last demonstration, the card was used, and I will create it and reinsert it. The first screen that is presented to the voter is their language selection screen. On this demonstration unit, we're restricting that to two languages, English and Spanish. In other jurisdictions, we present as many as seven languages for the voter to choose from. I'm going to select English, touch the start button to begin the voting process. The voter has the ability at this stage to enhance the size of the font should readability be an issue simply by touching the button that says large text. Now the text is displayed in an enhanced font size for ease of readability. Should the voter have any sort of color blindness issues to deal with, we can present the text in the highest contrast possible, which is black on white. For purposes of the demo, I will leave the, the screen in its normal color and will access the ballot by hitting the start button. Once I'm into the ballot, the instructions are very simple. I touch with my finger to record my choice. I vote for the first candidate. A, a large confirmation of that selection is presented to the voter. Should the voter at this point desire to have the text enlarged, they can merely go back to the enlargement screen and have it presented in a larger font. To advance to the next page, we touch the next button. The next page of races is displayed. We continue the process 
the dexterity is provided so that the voter can choose to touch anywhere on the line in which the candidate resides. Should I want to change my vote, I need to retouch, opening up the opportunities for the other candidates. I change, record, and you will note that I cannot overvote once I've made my per limit uh, candidate selections. I continue through the voting process, leaving some races blank at my discretion. When I reach the last page of the ballot, it is called an electronic summary page. You will notice that the, the races in which I've chosen a candidate are displayed for me along with the candidate's name. Races that are highlighted at this point represent undervoted races, races in which I chose not to vote for the allowable number of candidates. At this stage, the voter has an unlimited number of options. Option one is to go back to the last page of the ballot and possibly change their mind. A write-in could be recorded very simply by touching the write-in candidate's name on the ballot and typing in the letters of the candidate's name and hitting record write-in. I will then re return to the summary, noting that I voted for a write-in candidate in the last race. At this point, I can still continue to review. If I decide to vote for the race highlighted in red, I go directly to the page on which the race is presented. I record my vote and immediately return to the summary for verification of what I've done. This process is the review process that is now mandated by the certification agencies to give the voter an opportunity to review all their choices a number of times in a number of different manners before they decide to touch the cast ballot button, which is recording of their vote choices. At that point, the, the card is erased and returned to the voter for his or her return to the poll worker to be used again by the next voter. Now, we've demonstrated a cited, vote, a cited voters' routines voting the system. Each system is ADA compatible merely by inserting in the jack on the front of the station a headset, an audio headset, and on the back side of the station a specially designed, in cons consultation with the National Federation of the Blind, a telephonic 12 keypad insertion. A sighted, a handicapped, a disabled, a visually challenged voter can now vote this same ballot with audio instructions walking them through the entire process. A sighted voter with some sight restrictions can have the ballot presented to them with audio instructions simultaneously assisting them in recognition of candidate and issues. A totally blind voter would have the ballot completely hidden from view and would only interact with the system through the 12-key 12, 12 key telephonic keypad in recording their vote choices. So this technology allows a totally blind voter to interact with the system completely independent of any assistance. The first time in the history of voting that they can vote, a blind voter can vote totally unattended. Well, what about the uh, paper trail? Does, do you have any provisions for paper there's two. There's two paper trail options. The first option that is in accordance with the FEC standards right now is the ability to print out a facsimile after the election process of every vote cast in random order from each machine so that you can manually recount an entire election from a piece of paper. Recounts that we've conducted thus far have proved a 100% accuracy of the electronic both images that were tabulated. A second to be developed audit trail is defined as a voter verifiable receipt printed at the time the voter interacts with the system. We can do that from our software now to print a receipt. What we're awaiting is clear instructions as to what mechanism will house that receipt process. Will it be accessible by the poll workers? Will it be secured? Will it be barcoded? Will it be retrievable during the course of the day? We're awaiting instructions to finish the development of that product. Uh, who provides those instructions? Legislators, uh, certification boards. So uh, different states might have different requirements, is that? There are no requirements today. There are a generic requirement to provide a voter verifiable receipt with no definition as to how that is to be accomplished.
And then how do the boats get from this machine into the big pile of boats? I mean, how are the boats at, getting from this At each machine? precinct, at the close of the day, each unit prints out a total state by machine. Multiple machines would be housed in the precincts. So the removable flash memory from each of the units in a precinct would be brought to one machine for accumulation of precinct-wide results. That is then printed. Precinct total tape is printed for posting in accordance with the state legislation. And then from that point, the customer has two options. A modem results from that post voting system to Election Central, or they take their PCMCA flash memory cards to Election Central for direct upload and tabulation. All right. Will do. Thank you very much. You're what's, what's your position on the voter verifiable? Hello, I'm Nathan. This is the Avante Vote Tracker DRE system. Picture this in a, in a booth here. This is the main DRE module and the printer module. We've got an electromechanical counter that can't be tampered with. The ability to change the font size and the background color and contrast. English, Spanish, and Chinese are what we're going to have for Illinois. At this point, it asks us to insert the smart card, which is the key that unlocks the specific ballot style that's already loaded on the machine. Okay. We've got a Cook County ballot loaded on here. We are the Whiteside County our machine is zero error. A lot of things contribute to that. The first being one contest per screen. The other being skip contest. We're going to eliminate residual votes, those lost votes. It's okay to undervote as long as it's intentional. Okay, so we've got skip contest. The ability to review choices at any time. And this is the write-in screen. I'll just go through a few. It automatically goes to the next contest once the parameters of the contest are satisfied. We could skip a contest like that. Okay. This is a good example. It shows that we have to choose three candidates. Okay. So zero error won't let us go on until we've chosen three. Okay. So if I know these two, that may change. Another new feature is the ability to cast the ballot in the middle of the whole process, especially with a, a ballot as long as Cook County. Okay. At this point, it asks us to verify that that's what we wanted to do, that that wasn't a mistake. So it hit no more voting. Now it's bringing up the final review screen. It asks us to verify this is what we intended on this review screen. Skip contest is in white to stand out. And then we've got a scroll, scroll function. Okay. At this point, if I'm happy with this and this is what I want to vote on, I'll hit cast ballot. Now we get the all important voter verified paper audit trail right at the time of voting okay there we go this is completely secure we've got a 24 digit randomly generated alphanumeric number for security a relational check code and several other obscure security levels to make this completely unique and you notice you can't get it uh, it's, it's human nature to grab that as a receipt. Well, we want the voter to verify it so they can be comfortable that they can trust this machine. There it is in black and white on paper, okay? The Cook County ballot is so long, it's in three sections, okay? This is the first section. And we're happy that we tracked it. 
We also have functionality of setting the time and there's a beeper to keep uh, someone else from seeing this if, they, if the voter leaves early. Okay. There's a review button for more time. At this point it retracts it, separates it from the roll, and deposits it in the lockbox down here. Okay? The bottom half of the machine is the ballot box, so to speak. Completely secure. This is the next. Okay. So it tracks it back in, separates it from the roll for the county to to have for their paper audit trail. And here's the final. For handicapped accessibility, we have audio and the keyboard. Okay. The voter can vote completely unassisted once you get them started. The four corners of the keyboard are raised. <clears throat> the whole process is undergone through those four keys. When it gets, say it's a blind or visually impaired voter, it tells them what the four keys do, familiarizes them with those, and they go through the whole process with those keys. Okay? The other function that we've added recently is the ability for the a uh, handicapped person to be read the paper trail, okay? And how do they do that? It, it reads it to them. It not only verifies everything at the end in the review screen, but it also reads the paper trail as well. It reads the paper, it doesn't simply uh, if, give an indication of what's in the machine? <clears throat> Both. For someone who's blind. Both. If they're using the audio, it reads that paper audit trail. Oh, that's, okay. It, because otherwise the blind person wouldn't know what was on the paper trail. Well, it could be simply a audio of what's in the computer and not what's on the paper, but you're saying it's actually the paper. Yes. Okay. That's a good point. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that they don't miss out on that part. You also mentioned that if there were three, if the person had to cast three ballots in a particular race, they had to cast all three before they could go on. Suppose they only wanted to vote for one. Skip contest. Okay. If you know two people and you don't know anyone else and you don't want to vote for a third, say, you skip contests for the third position. Okay. Now, how do the votes get from this individual machine into the precinct totals and on from there? Okay. At the beginning of the process, at the county headquarters, the designated person would develop the ballot on the computer and burn it on a CD. Okay, with all the ballot styles, even provisional. Okay, then they're going to load one DRE machine. Doesn't matter which one it is. Anyone can be the host. Okay, with all the styles. Then we're going to wirelessly duplicate that information on the one machine to all the rest of them. Okay, so it greatly facilitates the, the startup process. You don't have to go around to each DRE machine and spend 20 minutes loading the ballots on there. Okay? At the end of the process, at the end of the election, we'll just reverse it. We're going to consolidate them all back to here, completely secure and encrypted, three different ways, to one machine and burn that on a CD. Okay? The other option is to modem the results, which Cook County is thinking about doing. You consolidate them to one machine and modem to headquarters through a private line to their modem pool. Okay. Notice you have some numbers, some screen windows down at the bottom there. Uh, are those of any concern for the voter? No, that's more for the county. It's another uh, protective measure. It's, it's our electromechanical can't be tampered with. This is the life total. This number will never be reset. So they can always go back to that for another check. Okay. This counter, the public counter, is reset every election. Okay. So 44 ballots have been cast on this machine since it was brand new. And today, 35 people have voted on this machine. Okay. 
On the uh, printed uh, ballot, do you have a serial number for this particular machine, and do you have those counter numbers on it as well? Uh, let me show you an example. This is a good example. This is a short ballot. This is one of the small counties. Here's our 24 digit randomly generated alphanumeric number. Okay. That's security measure number one. Security measure two is a relational check code here. All right. And three is how everything is spaced. It's completely unique, very hard to duplicate. Even this little dash and this dotted line moves around. Okay? So it's completely unique, cannot be duplicated. You cannot trace this back to the voter in any way. Okay? We've also added a barcode for uh, facilitating the audit. This barcode has all this information contained in it. And in the case of a recount, they just go through and scan them with a standard handheld scanner. Okay, to speed the process up instead of going through and manually checking it that way. Oh, very good. Okay. And then uh, I've got a copy of Cook Counties. That's okay. So these are the three sheets from Cook County. Mm -hmm. This says um, page one of three, two of three. Three of three. Okay, so it's a few feet long. On the administration side. Administration Very good. That's the meat and potatoes of it. That's what we're looking for. systems in the Midwest. Uh, we are here representing today at the show the AccuVote, which is a paper-based system uh, for voting in Illinois. Uh, the AccuVote system is, is a system where the ballot is on a piece of paper, such as the old paper ballot days. Uh, it's on two sides. The ballot can be 8.5 by 11, 8.5 by 14, Eight and a half by 17 and eight and a half by 18. Both sides of the ballot, we provide eight columns, four on each side. So the ballot can be laid out to fit the needs of the jurisdictions in our territory, which is Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, and Illinois, and soon will be in Minnesota. Uh, we'd like to show the AccuVote tabulator. This is the ballot format. This is an eight and a half by 11 ballot, and as you can see, it's very straightforward. The voter fills out the ovals for each candidate. As this ballot has two sides, as you can see, a proposition. The ballot is filled out by the voter by simply filling in the oval of the candidate of their choice. On completion, the voter simply inserts the ballot, and in this case, the ballot is returned. It's because I actually overvoted an office. It was a vote for one, and I voted for two. And this is part of the new requirements to return ballots to voters that they can actually fix this. If they, that's what they wanted to do, we can actually bypass the system and allow for this ballot to go through. Otherwise, they would return this ballot to be put in a spoiled ballot envelope and they could receive another and go back into the voting booth and vote. So in this case, I'll just simply vote it correctly.
And again, the voter simply walks up to the, the device, inserts their ballot, it's all done. So it's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, it's traditionally a paper ballot, it's very readable, uh, and it's got a ballot, so it's verifiable. Now, you showed us what happens if we overvote. What happens if we undervote? Undervoting, the, the system allows for the condition to kick back an undervote. The, the laws in the, the state of Illinois and the Midwest mainly do not require for an undervote to be returned. When we implement in our training process the system, uh, we do kick back a blank because it's just a good voter education for the first time in the implementation of this type of system. So I haven't voted this. So it sort of kicks back and tells me that it's blank out. Uh, because a lot of times what voters will do, if they didn't follow the instructions, they might have just started checking people's names and they actually wanted to vote for something, but they didn't actually vote in the, the right oval position. <coughs> so in essence, that'll come back. That gives the voter the opportunity to make those corrections on the ballot. Uh, again, we've had jurisdictions on this since the 2000 presidential election. And in Michigan, we've had them on the AccuVote system since uh, 1991. So this system is a very tried and true Mark Sense solution or optical solution. For uh, again, it allows that to happen. After the first couple of elections, they turn that function off because a lot of people like to vote blank. They're executing the right to vote. They may not like anybody on the ballot, but that's their access, and they're speaking out by casting the blank. So we can override it and let it go also. And again, this system trips a public counter, so it keeps track of ballots as we go out throughout the day. Do you have any provisions for visually impaired uh, voters? Uh, the provisionally impaired is the TS solution, uh, which is you've seen and, and gone through with the people. We just didn't bring it here because we knew they were going to provide that solution. Uh, so you don't have an optical scan solution or adaption? This is an optical scan machine? Right. This is a Diebold solution, uh -huh. so the Diebold touchscreen is the solution. Okay. But the optical scan um, can't be adapted, correct? Your uh, optical scan machine, correct? It's, it's integrated with people. It is a people solution. The optical scan is part of people. Okay. But if someone has already purchased optical Sir? scan... Yeah. Sir, could you wait for a few minutes oh, for taking sure. here? Sir, thank you. I don't, I don't, yeah. That's all right. Uh, who prints the uh, ballots? Uh, we are full service dealers, so we, we printed out of our Kalamazoo digital facility in Michigan, we printed in 2002 12 million ballots that were from 8.5 by 11 to 8.5 by 20. Uh, we print for the state of Florida, we print for the state of North Carolina, Michigan, and our territory here. Uh, in those 12 million ballots, we printed 8 million between the last week of July and the end of October. Um, is a serial number printed on each ballot uh, in addition to the votes by the voter, or is there any way of identifying the uh, ballots as legitimate? Uh, suppose somebody uh, stole a box of, of uh, ballots from uh, a warehouse. Could they use those and slip them into a ballot box no. somewhere? There's a, there's a, a predetermined code uh, for every precinct and ballot configuration. So they would have to know the whole coding system to, mm -hmm. to be able to do it. Okay. And uh, how are the ballots, uh, how's the count conveyed to the county? At the end of the polls, of course at the beginning, we print out a zero report showing that the device has no ballots on the system. That is folded up, the covers back placed, Every logging instance, when I said, you know, if we wanted to let the blank vote go through, we could override it by hitting yes, would allow the ballot to go. It logs every event that a, that a judge or a poll worker does on this unit. And then when we close the polls, we simply put a, what we call an ender card in, hold the buttons down, the yes button, it ends the precinct, and it prints out the result for that precinct. Applying the requirement of the number of printouts that are required by each state's different. 
uh, they'll post one in the precinct. Then they can upload via modem uh, directly to the central count, or they can remove, by removing this panel, we have a precinct memory card. That memory card can be taken and taken to a satellite station and uploaded to the central count, or directly to a central count location, and just insert it, and the data is read right off the memory card. So we provide all kinds of solutions depending upon the jurisdiction. So the, the more urban, the harder it is to get around, the more satellite, the more upload. Uh, the less urban, more rural, people tend to drive it to the courthouse or to the election authority and read them from their mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jack Gerbel. I'm the president of Unilag. Louder. Louder. Okay. Hi. Hi, I'm Jack Gerbel. Uh, I'm the president of Unilag Corporation. And we are the proud parents of the Patriot voting system. Patriot was the very first touchscreen system uh, created in the United States. And as such, we've got two presidential elections under our belt. We have many customers and our customers have had about 200, or a little over 200, uh, elections on our system. And all successful. We have always counted every single vote, never lost a vote. Our, uh, we have always finished early on election night. We have never had a significant problem with programming, hardware, software, or anything. So our track record, we say, is the best there is in the industry. Um, just a little bit about uh, Unilect. I've been uh, here for, in this business for about 30 year, 38 years, from IBM all the way through one of the four founders of computer election systems into Unilect. But back in my former day with, with uh, CES, Computer Election Systems, I sold and installed punch card system for City of Chicago and for Cook County. So those systems, I am very familiar with those systems. Okay, let's talk a little bit about our system. And one of the things that's very important these days is security. And academia, the professors that are out there have talked about uh, two things. Number one is fraud and number two is hackers. Hackers is fairly easy because we deny access, totally deny access to them. We are never on the internet, never. We are never in a, in a uh, network type situation and we are never connected to the web. And we do that specifically so we can never get any hackers involved in our system at all. Fraud is another thing. Three places fraud can come from. From our company, from our customers, and from an outside source. Through locked uh, units, et cetera, and for uh, our customers, we actually do a complete, we say all that has to be completely, all that has to be completely uh, under lock and key. Uh, users, passwords, et cetera so the outside can't do it. We do the programming. We do the complete programming of how to count ballots. Then there's a brick wall and our customers do their own ballot layout. And we teach them how to do that. So as a result, we cannot commit fraud as a company because our customers are the ones that do the ballot setup. Customers cannot do fraud because they have to live and use our rules, if you will. So that's what our answer to the fraud, and, and it's a very important subject. Um, from a standpoint of users and how they can do it, that is with the, uh, the voters, with the poll workers, etc. We are basically recognized as the most friendly to use system in the United States. We concentrate specifically on poll workers because they are the ones that are out there on the front lines on election day. And I want to do, I do want to show you why we say that. So let's go over here, we can. 
This, but first of all, let's talk about the voters. This is a typical screen, and to vote, the voter, are you set? Okay, you simply touch. Now, the idea is we have four offices here. You'll notice the nice big print. It is larger than we feel any other system that has, has printing on it at all. You simply touch anywhere in the box where the candidate is located of your choice. You cannot overvote. This is a vote for one. And you'll also notice that the heading went dark. That indicates to the voter they have done what they wanted, what they should do. You can also, let's say in Lieutenant Governor, which is the next one, let's say I want to do a write-in. I can do that and just come over here and do O B I L whoop backspace L L space and it's count it's spelling here and let's say uh, S M I T H Bill Smith I touch right in complete and there's Bill Smith the thing about these write-ins are that nobody has to uh, hand count write-ins ever because it will automatically add them all together. Now if I want to vote for Harry here, but oh, I made a mistake. I cannot do this, but I can deselect Harry and then vote for the guy that I wanted to. I'm going to leave Governor alone just for a minute because I want to show you something else. I just simply go to the next page and I go like this. And now this is a vote for three, and so the this is still going. So, oh, it's still on. So do, that's, okay, that's it. Now let's say propositions. I'm going to vote for this one, but I'm not going to vote for Prop 2. And I'm going to go to the next page. It says I'm at the end of the ballot. Finish voting, press review choices, and review your selections. You touch review choices, and this shows all the people that were voted for, including Bill Smith, as you might recall, which was the write-in. Where it's red, that means that that's an, an office we did not vote for. So by simply touching the name of the office, we can go back to that screen, vote for governor, and then we can go to this again. And let's say I didn't vote for Prop 2, but I don't want to. I don't want to. I've decided not to. At this point, I would simply touch record ballot now, and right in the middle of the screen it will say, your ballot has been cast, thank you for voting. Then that will go dark and wait for the next voter. Okay, now, there is one other thing I want to show you. For the, per for the, uh, oh, for the person who is uh, colorblind, by turning a little button, I can turn this completely to a black and white screen so that nobody that is colorblind has to worry about that. I can cut it back as often as I want. Now, there's a, how did all this get here, by the way? The way this got here was, well, wait, let's do one more thing. We also have, for the ADA, the blind voters, for the blind voters, we have the Freedom Unit for the... That's what's going on right now. And I don't know if you can hear it in the background. We normally do not have it on speakers. We utilize a headphone, kind of like this one. However, the, uh, so that more people can hear it, we do have it on speakers. We don't need to pull it out. I'm just going to explain what happens. Okay. The way this works is, now first of all, you'll see that although my birthday is on Halloween, that's not why this is orange and black. People with very limited sight say that glow orange on black is the best contrast for them. That's why we made that. They use these four shaped buttons to uh, go ahead and navigate, go <laughs> forward in the ballot, backwards, make a decision to vote for somebody, and to take it away as the square. Over here, 
this, this keyboard is strictly if they want to do a write-in. It's a very easy system. A ballot is read to the voter, uh, office by office, and then the voter gives an op gets an opportunity to vote for the person of his choice. And when they push this to go ahead and, and vote for the person of their choice, they will, in fact, uh, uh, hear it back in, in the headphones. So there is a positive feedback, including write-ins. When you push a G, it will say G, etc. So this is the uh, this is the freedom unit for the blind and the visually impaired. The uh, next thing is the person who comes in in a wheelchair. This unit weighs eight and a half pounds. It comes lifts right out and goes on the lap of the voter, so he can he or she can use it. We also have a curbside unit. There's a disconnect. Once the ballot is downloaded, it will uh, be available then to go ahead and, and uh, be disconnected and taken out to the person who's out in the, uh, in the car. Um, let's see, There's a, there are many ways. People with, uh, oh, like, I was talking to one lady and she said, well, my father, when he went blind, he had a stroke. He also lost control of his fingers. So we have a way to be able on the blind unit, or the freedom unit, to actually vote with a knuckle or so on and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of other things, and I don't mean to bore you with all of them. Uh, let's see now, for just a moment, how, we're, how did all this happen? Where did this come from? Can you come over here and focus on this? Roy, I'd appreciate it. Can you see this? Okay. This is the single thing that the, that the poll workers use. Now, there's only one thing to push. These are the instructions. This is all the poll worker does all day long. There are two lines here. The top line tells what they what to do next. The bottom line, what the vote, what the poll worker last did. Poll worker would sit right here and when a when a voter is uh, comes in, they of course are going to get a demonstration of how to vote on this new system. Their name is looked up in the poll books and they come to this person who simply touches next voter. Oh, hang on just a moment. Have to, can you cut this off for just a quick second? Uh, I did mess up because of this. this guy. The poll worker uh, simply touches next voter when a new voter comes in and touches the booth number and simply says, please go to booth five or go to booth one or whatever. When they go to booth one, they vote as we just were talking about. And this light, if you can see it there, is solid. And will stay solid until the person who is voting finishes their vote. And it becomes uh, blank, it becomes blanking. But it's a very simple thing to use and you can have every from one to 16 voter units and one to 16 ballot styles. So, in Chicago and Cook County, this will definitely take care of anything that you folks have. Now, this continues on, but in, comp in you know, uh, oh, looking at other systems, this will, by the push of one button to open the polls, it will open the polls for every one. Most of our friendly competitors, they have to open up individually. Each individual unit must be open. Likewise, they have to use a smart card or something like that, which the voter has to use to learn how to use the vote. And uh, if they can't do it, the poll worker has to get up and go do it. With ours, it's simply go to booth one, they walk over there and their ballot is already there. No access codes, etc. We have this little sign says that our system doesn't need smart cards, access codes, voter cartridges, or wires. Now, just to hit a couple of other points that I know you're interested in, 
is, as I mentioned before, from an accuracy standpoint, we have had, over, our customers have had well over 200 elections, jurisdiction-wide. There has never been a single vote change with a recount. The recount uh, that we, we have had seven recounts, six of them automatic, where they use uh, counters not used on election night. And the last one was one where, from a paper trail, we can, which we do have, after the election, we can do a hand count, not us, our, com our, our uh, county or city can do a hand recount. And we have had one of those on an $80 million bond issue, relatively small area, small place. From a reliability standpoint, uh, the way we handle that is, number one, we have no moving parts except for the printer. And we also uh, use metal enclosures. We do not use plastic because plastic breaks. Metal, better at bend than break. And our situation is we feel that from ruggedness and reliability, metal enclosures, no moving parts is the way to go. I mentioned the audibility uh, way with the, with the uh, OA tape that in fact you can do a hand recount of every anonymous voter in the precinct. Those are not in order, so they are randomized. Uh, I will also say that although we have not come up at this point with a uh, voter verified uh, receipt, if you will, uh, that is something we are working on and should have very shortly. Uh, as you probably know, the state of Illinois is the only one that requires that at this point. Uh, so, ease of use, we feel and our customers feel and people all over say the DARS is the easiest system. Well, it's easy for the voters, there's no question, but it's the easiest system for the poll workers. And another thing is when the polls close, you break a seal, one-time metal seal, padlock seal, and simply push the red button. It will close the polls for all the units that are in the precinct and immediately the totals. And at that point, that's it. Again, most of the other systems don't use it that way. They have to go and close each individual voter unit. And then they take a smart card or some other device and go and suck out the totals from each individual voter unit. And then they go to something else and accumulate it in the precinct. It's a lot of extra work for a lot of maybe elderly poll workers. They will also say that what this leads to is not all election results are in on election night because of this. And then they have to go yeah. the next day and search the various voter units to find where the additional votes are. Uh, basically, that's it. We've had a wonderful session here. We appreciate you uh, listening to what we have to say. But from ease of use, accuracy, reliability, security, and auditability, we feel we have the answers. But we should. We were the first Dutch green system in the United States. Thank you again. I have a question. How are the results uh, transmitted from this machine oh, to the I county? Oh, I talked about that. Do you want me to continue talking? Yeah. Okay. Once the, the this is, uh, are we still on the air here? Once the totals, uh, or the polls have been closed, right now there are two ways to do it. We can, by a modem, immediately send the totals from the precinct in 20 seconds. Uh, there is also, uh, the other thing is this little pack, is this little info pack, which will also have the totals in it. And in close-in precincts, quite often people will carry these, and they're downloaded it in one second. Third is, the city of Chicago and Cook County currently use wireless to send in the totals. We can also do that as well. It's an easy change. So we could, in fact, have the wireless. And you can get your totals extremely fast. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that you'd like to know about? Is the, uh, you don't personally have a voter viewable receipt. Pardon me? Uh, no, we don't have okay. the voter uh, 
ver verify the voter paper verify. Right. We do have a voter verified uh, review screen, so they can, in fact, on one screen look at it. However, we are working on the on the receipt, and we can definitely have it. That's what's required. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Election systems. We are here demonstrating the AutoMark Voter Assist Terminal. It's a product that allows uh, voters with disabilities to use a paper ballot, an optical scan ballot. I'm going to show you some ballots here. I'll just pull them up. We work with any of the standard, uh, the, the industry standard companies. So this is a ballot from Sequoia, uh, which is another company demonstrating here. We'll work with that ballot. This is a, a ballot from ESNS. We can support that ballot. This is from Incavote. We'll support that ballot. The one I'm going to show you today is this one from Diebold. Basically, what our what our device does is it allows voters uh, that are using an optical scan ballot. In most cases, voters will simply mark this ballot by hand with a pen. However, a voter that has uh, uh, visibility problems or that has motor skill problems can't mark that if they have uh, uh, limited sight or are blind. They need some other way to mark this ballot, and so we provide the AutoMark Voter Assist Terminal. It's basically an intelligent pen. It's a way for them to mark it, to be part of the same process, and then when they're done and it's marked it for them, they put it in a tabulator like any other voter, and their vote gets cast in the same way. So they're treated as any other voter, and there's, there's nothing singled out about their votes. I'll show you the device now if you like. Okay, this is a prototype device, so there's some things it doesn't do. Unfortunately, this conference was just about two weeks before we had our production version ready to show off, but we'll show you the prototype and I'll point out things that are different. Basically, the, the voter brings their ballot here, they enter their ballot their, uh, in this slot, they can put it in in any orientation. Uh, what it will do is read these codes on the bottom of the ballot to know what ballot it is, and it will present those choices to the voter. They can use the touch screen. This is, they can choose the language. The ballots can be associated with eight languages, and then there are other languages that can be supported using uh, audio. Um, and in this case, English is the only one that we have available on this ballot. So they continue, and then it starts presenting the races and the candidates. We could listen to this over audio, in which case it would read the, the uh, race to us, and it would read each of the candidates. And we can use these buttons to highlight the particular candidate that we're interested in, and then, uh, and then move on to the next race. And um, so we've hi highlighted Abraham Lincoln. We can switch to another candidate if we like. Uh, we can use the right arrow to move on to the next race. I apologize, I'm, I'm messing up my keyboard here. But, um, or the, we can use the on screen and just use a touch screen. It says late night talk show, we'll pick David Letterman here. One of the things that the production unit will do is, if you try to vote for a second candidate, it will alert you that you're trying to overvote. This one also won't let you overvote, but it just switches to the other candidate that you've chosen. If you uh, try to undervote, which means you try and skip a race, let's say we're not going to put anybody here at all, and I just say forward. In this one, it'll let us go forward. In the production unit, it will actually alert us and say, you haven't selected anyone for this race. Now, they can go ahead and continue. They don't, they're not forced to select someone, but it at least alerts them. They make their selections. In this case, it's a vote for two. They move through the race. I'm going to go ahead and go through relatively quickly now and just pick some answers to the different issues. And then it shows us a summary of all the selections that we've made. At that point, we can jump back by pressing any of the races directly to jump to that race, or we can use the back button and go back and change our vote, change our selection. When we're happy with those selections, we press forward, we tell it to mark our ballot, and then now it's going to print both sides of the ballot. While it's doing that, I'll just mention the audio. Uh, the audio is synthesized voice. We met with the National Federation for the Blind to ask them what they would prefer. We made quite a few improvements based on what they talked about. There are four keys that will be over here. Um, so I can show you in a picture if you like, but 
One of them turns the screen on and off for the uh, uh, visually disabled. There's one that um, repeats the last phrase that has just spoken. And if you hold that button down, it will switch between a male and a female voice, because some people prefer one or the other. There is the ability to speed up and slow down the voice, which some people, they can they catch it on, catch on very quickly. They can speed it up and go through as quickly as possible. And then, of course, there's a volume control. Also, this whole panel, there's a separate panel that looks just like it that can be set in the lap for someone that needs uh, it really needs to have it closer to them, or it can even be taken out to curbside. It has a 50-foot uh, cord. It can be taken out to curbside if someone can't get out of their car, and it has the audio inputs. On the front is an eighth-inch audio jack. There'll be a quarter-inch audio jack and an ADA port. And what the ADA port does is it allows someone to plug in a puff sip device or any what's called a three-way switch, so they can plug in a, um, a pedal, a foot pedal, or a device, any kind of ADA device that uses that standard port. They've finished, we've finished marking our, our ballot here and it's given it back to us. We take it out, you see it's got the, the, uh, the ovals that we chose. We chose Franklin Roosevelt, we chose Jay Leno. We skipped the favorite baseball team, although I would have picked the Cubs. Uh, we, we chose our Minister of Art. And now at this point, we just take this ballot and we go put it in the tabulator. If it was a Diebold ballot, we put it in a Diebold tabulator. Whatever is used in the, uh, in the um, jurisdiction. If I'm a sighted voter, I can verify this just by simply looking at it. If I'm blind, I could also take this ballot and put it back into the machine, and it will read my choices back to me. So it gives me a chance of just doing a second chance. If I'm using a, a ballot like this, where I'm going to use a device that puts it in, and I make a little mark. When I pull this out, and it's got a little mark on 114, I might not know what 114 means. I can put this back in here, or even if I mark this by hand, I can put it into the auto mark, and it will then read to me and show me the choices that I've made and tell me if I've done any overvoting or undervoting. So that's basically the, the system. It's designed to be the most friendly system for voters with disability or voters that need alternate language support. How do the results get to the county? Uh, it's a good question. This machine does not tabulate or store results in any way. It's basically an intelligent pen. It, it marks the ballot. The ballot results are then counted in the same way they're counted for everyone else. It's put into a tabulator, and then however the county decides to do to, uh, to tabulate the results, it might be precinct there where it's uploaded, it might be a central count. Uh, from our standpoint, we don't care. We're an add-on device that helps the uh, voter with disabilities uh, or someone that needs some assistance marking the ballot. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. This is the ABC Edge from Sequoia Voting Systems. Um, this is a touchscreen DRE machine. The way that um, this works is that you have a touchscreen here. Um, I, we've got this set up for a uh, demonstration ballot. The first part of this demonstration ballot is a choice of different languages. There are multiple languages that you can use with this. Um, this particular ballot shows um, Vietnamese, Tagalog, Chinese. I'm going to choose English. Um, the ballot is set up so it's very simple and easy to use. The only thing you need to do is touch the name of the candidate that you would like and the next button. And if you want to change your vote, you deselect the name and choose a different name. And anytime you can change language or review, at the end of the ballot, there is a review screen where you can see who you voted for or make changes. If you decide to make a change, it will send you back to that screen and you can make the change. At the very end, it says touch your ballot. You press the cast ballot. At this point, at this point, the ballot verified receipt is printed over here. This allows the voter to verify the, uh, the receipt is the same and, and uh, all their choices are what they wanted to vote on. Now if they say, well, this is, I want to make a change, I want to change my mind and uh, choose a different candidate, 
uh, obviously, since this is already printed, now we have to, this is a spoiled ballot. So what it does is, if you press go back, it's going to print um, voided on this receipt. The, uh, the voided will show if there's, in the case of a recount, it will show that uh, this, not to count this particular, um, these results, and that's the indication of that. Then you go back, make the change that you wish to make, review, if these are the correct selections, you cast the ballot again, cast the ballot, and then, and then it's almost out of paper, so it's a service required, but don't worry about that. Um, prints the results again. If you verify these and say, yes, this is definitely what I wanted to vote for, you hit cast ballot, and it says accepted on the bottom of the receipt, and then the receipt is spooled inside the receipt printer. Um, the receipt printer is uh, connected to our, connects to our machine, and um, what it is, it's just a unit that is um, added to our standard edge machines, um, and can be, can be, uh, all of our machines can be retrofitted with this device. Um, the way to change the roll of paper, you, you, there is a screw on the side here. You can unroll this and change paper. Uh, the spools are, um, all it does is spool into a, into a spool and then um, you would go through, in the case of recap, you have to unroll it and, and review each section. Yeah, how do the uh, ballots get from that machine to the county? Okay, uh, at the end of the day, the machine, this machine is completely um, self-sufficient. There is no networking going into this machine. And if I can, is there a way for you to look over here? Um, there's no, there's no uh, cores or network capability in this. It only, the only thing going into this is the electricity. Now, since it's self-contained, the, at the end of the day, when the polls are closed, there is a cartridge, a results cartridge that goes into this that um, you would take out, you would take to a tabulating location, and you would tabulate. And this is an example of the cartridge. This is taken to a central location. There's also a backup set of, there's a uh, redundant memory in this that would have, in the event that something happens to this, is destroyed. There's a um, memory inside of this where the results can also, they can go back to the machine and load the results into another cartridge. Okay. Well, I can't think of any other questions. Okay. Uh, interviews, reliability. <clears throat> Uh, someone mentioned that printers can jam. How reliable are your printers? Well, our printers are standard, off-the-shelf um, thermal printers. But it is a it is a thermal printer, so it's more reliable than something that's um, oh, what would you say like a bubble jet or not not what's, what's the other inkjet uh, inkjet or something similar to that. This is a thermal printer, so it's. Uh, oh. Pretty reliable, but you do have the possibility of printer jams. Um, in which case, you would just take the existing roll that's in there, lock that one up, and replace it with a new roll. I recall the early uh, thermal printers were printed on paper. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was the paper or the chemicals that would cause it to fade after a while. Is there no, this a, is a newer uh, model? If you, I don't know if you can zoom in on this. Oh, well, it's already gone, but um, now the ink is. Uh... Okay, here's an example of a printed receipt. Show we're back for the But um, the ink uh, First of all, we doesn't really smear on this. On this. It doesn't smear on these. Or fade. Or fade. Um, I'm, that's a technical question that I'm not. Okay. I, I would refer you to 
a technical <laughs> person with our, you know, within our organization to give you a, the definite yeah. answer to that. That's you know, really sure. Well, they probably would not be required to keep this for several years. You know. Yeah. So for the amount of time that you're going to keep it, um, whichever, whatever the recount laws, how many months, but but it should be, it, it would uh, definitely. Oh, thank you very much. All right, sorry, I stuttered a little bit at this. My name is Gail Hart, and I'm with IVS. We're a Louisville-based company. We do accessible voting only, which is for the visually impaired and handicapped. Uh, our company, uh, actually our design of our system, uh, was developed in conjunction with the National Federation of the Blind, the National Foundation of the Blind, and several other of the disability groups. So um, it, this system was actually built from the ground up uh, for uh, the visually impaired and handicapped. Um, I'd like to show you a little bit about the machine. Um, it, is, it is an audio ballot, so we've got a headset uh, that would go on. The input device is a 12-button keypad that is identical to your telephone keypad. The 5 key on it is raised, so you can move from there. We've got a built-in printer that allows you to print if you would like to. You can either print after every vote is cast or you can just print uh, the summary of results at the end of the day. Uh, we've also got um, two flashcards that uh, maintain redundant uh, voter information as well. So you've actually got three different uh, ways of maintaining the data. Some of the uh, features of our system that I think are unique, uh, one is we've got a feature on our system that allows you to speed up the recording. Uh, we've had a lot of requests and um, uh, we're able to listen to the uh, recording at different speeds. And also on the headset, we've got a volume, uh, so you're able to uh, listen at the volume that's uh, best for you as well. I'll go ahead and take you through. Um, when you come into the polls, uh, the poll worker would es escort you over to the machine and scan. If this is a regular ballot, press 1. If this is a provisional ballot, press 2. Please give the headphones to the voter. Can you hear that? Ask the voter to press any key when ready. To continue in English, press 1. One. Please take a moment to listen to the voting instructions. If you already know how to vote using this system, you may press 8 any time to start voting. After hearing the title of each contest, will hear a list of candidates or choices for that contest, one at a time. Button 5 is used to select or deselect a candidate. To the left and right of button 5 are buttons 4 and 6. They are used to go to the previous or next candidate. Above and below button 5 are buttons 2 and 8. They are used to go to the previous or next contest. You may press these buttons at any time if you don't want to listen to the instructions following each candidate's or contest's name. If you need help along the way, press zero. The zero button provides information about what you are listening to, selections you've made, and what to do next. Also, you can press three to incrementally change the speed of the audio. After completing the ballot, you will be given an opportunity to review your selections before casting your final official ballot. If you understand these instructions and want to start voting, please press 8. But if you want to choose a party for straight party voting, press 5. Otherwise, here is the first of three parties, Republican Party. To select this party, press 5. To hear the previous party, press 4. Democratic Party, to Green Party. To select this party, press 5. For straight party voting, you selected Green Party. If this is correct, press 1. You will now make selections for nonpartisan contests. Nonpartisan contest 1 of 2. Justice position number 3. Vote for 1. Here is the first of 5 candidates. Donald Albertson, Anthony Black, Alex Butler, Catherine Jones, Kenneth Thompson. You 
you've selected Kenneth Thompson to deselect this candidate, nonpartisan contest two of two, constitutional amendment number four, family court, vote for one. To hear the full text of this measure, press one. Here is the first of two options. Yes. Just no. You've selected. No. You have gone through the whole ballot. To review your ballot selections, press 5. Cast your ballot now. Press count twice. Thank you for voting. It's that simple, and one of the other features I wanted to tell you about is something called Practice and Preview that we have that is going to be a toll-free number that anyone can call into prior to Election Day. Um, they will then enter in a code that will bring up their ballot specifically um, for them and their location. And they'll be able to, from home, with a touch-tone keypad, uh, practice and preview the ballot that they're going to hear on Election Day. So if they have the touch tone, it's going to be the same identical keypad. Uh, it's something that we hope uh, uh, will, will aid in, in uh, making this easier with all the changes in technology right now. Uh, some people are intimidated by that, and we hope that this will make it easier for them and uh, maybe get some more people out to the poll. Mm -hmm. So um, again, we're IVS, and we're based in Louisville, and uh, we hope you like our solution. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, you actually print out the paper uh, yes. receipt? Yes, yep. we can okay. do that. It's a feature you can turn on or turn off, but we can print out um, after every vote is cast or just do the summary at the end of the day. Uh-huh. Okay. How are the uh, votes conveyed to the county? Uh, that depends. Um, this system can be used either independently um, or it can be tied into existing equipment if somebody has existing equipment already in the county and then it's a matter of merging the data if you want or keeping the data separately. We've got our own um, election management software that we maintain with the system. Does this machine count votes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there's several different ways to do it. It's a matter of coming in and seeing what the city and county, how they want to handle that and how they want to see the data. Um, do you transmit votes from this machine through a cable hookup, or is there a part that you pull out and, and carry over? It's or? actually on a flash disk, so it would be a part um, that you would take out. All okay. the, it's on a little disk. All the data is maintained on that. I see. And there's actually two of them. It's redundant in the machine, so there's two disks plus uh, uh, on the paper. Uh -huh. so. Okay, very good. So what, uh... <laughs> I'm Ethan Gibbs with True Vote International. Our product is the True Vote Voter Validation and Verification System. It's a voting system and a voter validation and verification system that allows the voters to verify that their votes have been received, recorded, and counted. It is more than just a traditional voting system. And all, it is also an auditing system that allows that every vote is not only counted, but all votes are accounted for. The system is a DRE, a direct recording electronic system. The system has been designed to be extremely user-friendly to both poll workers and to voters. The system can be operated by any poll worker that can remember three basic cards. Number one, the cards are red, white, and blue. Red card opens the poll uh, in the morning by simply swiping the red card. It prints out a zero totals tape certifying that all counts are at zero, and it certifies that the equipment is functioning as it should. The white card, when activated at the voter registrations desk, a card is encoded with the voter's address, the language they speak, any disability such as blindness, whether or not they're going to be voting a provisional ballot. When this card is activated and is swiped, it brings up the ballot that is applicable to that particular voter. Every ballot face in the county, for example, every ballot face in Cook County, 700 ballot faces would be loaded on every machine which could allow voters to vote anywhere in the county but vote only once because there is a statewide vote 
the statewide voter registration system. The system brings up the ballot one ballot at a time, one race at a time. It splits the screen. On the right-hand side, the ballots are presented. On the, on the uh, other side of the screen, it shows your current selection. So to vote, the only thing the voter needs to do is merely touch the screen, and it shows, and it shows who you voted for on the right-hand side. If the voter has made an error, they just simply touch the screen, and it returns back to that race, and they can correct their, or correct their vote. And it automatically goes to the next race. Here we have the 7th Congressional District. You vote, you only touch the screen, and you vote. Or a voter can do a write-in right on the screen by simply touching right in and typing in the name. The write-in right on the screen it automatically goes to the next race. We also have the ability to put in photographs. We're the only system that is federally certified that has the ability to put in photographs. Now, photographs can be useful in situations where you have voters with the same name running in the same election. For example, if we relied strictly on name recognition, what if we had three people named Jesse Smith running for the same race? There's no other system on the market that can address this. Our system will allow the uh, election officials to put in photographs of those individuals to kind of make a distinction. Okay. This is an example of a vote for three race. Notice when I vote for the first candidate, I have the, the ability to go forward. I can vote for the second one. I still have the ability to go forward. But when I vote for the third candidate, it automatically changed. So it is virtually impossible to overvote on this system. It is also virtually impossible to undervote, not knowing that you undervoted. In order to vote, you must vote for this candidate or this candidate, or you must press skip in order to go forward. So we'll vote for this candidate, it goes forward. Okay, we'll vote for the next candidate. Okay, we can skip a race. Vote for the next candidate. So it presents a race at a time. What we have here is a proposition on whether or not to retain uh, judges. Here, Charles Freeman is asked, the vote is being asked whether or not Charles Freeman should be retained, yes or no. By pressing yes, I can confirm it, or I can press no. We also have the ability put in a photograph to show the picture of the judge that you are voting to retain or to remove. Or we could simply print the name across the front. The system is very marginal and very flexible. The system has been designed to comply with approximately 98% of all of the election requirements around the country within the states. Okay. Now I'm ready to cast my ballot, but before I cast my ballot, it gives me an opportunity to go back and review all of my selections before I cast my ballot. At any time, I can go back to that race and I can change my ballot. Now I'm ready to cast my ballot. Now, here is where this system begins to differ from all other systems on the market. With most other systems where there is not a paper verifiable audit trail, when you push cast ballot, that becomes an exercise in blind faith. That is, the voter hopes that their vote is included. This system issues a receipt. The receipt shows the races and who they voted for. This receipt will come out under glass. The voter will be able to verify this, this receipt. And this receipt will fall into a ballot box. This, the voter will not be allowed to retain this receipt. This receipt will only be used in case of a recount. And this, this, this receipt will go into a ballot box. It also re produces a second receipt that's called a voter validation and verification receipt. This receipt shows the machine that the voter voted on, the precinct, 
and it also renders a voter val a uh, randomly generated voter validation number. With this voter validation number, the voter after the election can go back to any computer, log on to the website, and they will get an exact replication of the information that's on this receipt. So they know that the county or the state actually got their ballot. Now, for those individuals who do not have a computer, they can use a telephone, touch telephone. They can dial in, get a voice response that says, Now do you put in their voter validation number and they'll get a voice response. And you hear this. Please enter your voter validation number. You enter one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. If this is correct, press 1. Please enter your five-digit PIN number. Congratulations! Your vote was received, recorded, and counted. Your vote was cast in Bedford County, Tennessee, in precinct number 55 at 2.35 p.m. Your vote was number 48,888 of 118, Stockford, 221, cast in Bedford County, Tennessee. You voted in the following ways. U.S. Presidential race, U.S. Senate race, and it lists all of the races that you voted in. It does not list who you voted for. Mm -hmm. What this does, it allows voters to independently verify that their votes have been received, recorded, and counted. Another method that can be used is what is called a published public count of the votes. That is, the certified results of every election could be published in a public document that contains the voter validation numbers of all of the votes cast. For example, here we have 275,652 votes that were cast as part, and that represents the certified results. There would be exactly 275,000 voter validation numbers in this book. The voter, knowing that he or she voted at Lattimore School, would actually get, actually get a copy of this book and go in and find their voter validation number in this official vote count. That way they would know that their vote was part of the official vote count. If it's not there, they would just simply make a copy and mail this receipt to the Secretary of State's office. And if there were just a, maybe a handful of votes that were not counted, that would be one thing. But what this system does, it solves the problem of the overvote. It is impossible to overvote in this system. It solves the problem of the undervote that is, you cannot unknowingly undervote because you have to vote for a candidate or a candidate named Skip in order to move forward. But most importantly, this system solves the problem of the uncounted votes, and that's significant. In Florida in the 2000 election, there were 180,000 uncounted votes in Florida. There were over 80,000 uncounted votes in the state of Georgia. In Cook County, there were 62,000 uncounted votes. There's the real problem. This system, the voter validation part of it, solves the problem of the uncounted votes because the system allows the voters to independently verify that their votes have been received, recorded, and counted. That is, the system turns every voter into an auditor mm -hmm. with the responsibility of auditing one vote their own. Doing that, they can collectively conduct a 100% audit of every election. So with this system, there can never be any uncounted votes where the voter does not have an opportunity to verify that their votes have been received, recorded, and counted. Well, it's, uh, it's very nice. Well, thank you. Uh, very ingenious and uh, goes a long way towards you know, presenting what, what people want. 
uh, it's unfortunate that the only piece left out is that the voter can't find out exactly who they were registered as voting for in each particular race. It's the last piece of the puzzle. Okay, now that can be, now that can be solved. However, we have to ask the question: Do we want to maintain anonymity? Do we want to, is the, if we don't need to maintain anonymity and we want anybody to know who you voted for, once you know it and you have a piece of paper that shows who you voted for, there opens the door for fraud. There opens the door for vote buying. People would say, bring me back this piece of paper showing that you voted for me and I'll pay you $20. So we have to sacrifice there somewhere. Mm -hmm. to say, you can see how you voted in the poll. You can drop it in the box. However, we can't let you walk out to the general public with this paper because it would invite fraud. Mm -hmm. So that's the trade-off. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, <clears throat> how are the votes uh, gotten from this machine to the county? Okay. At the end of the election, I told you that there were three cards. At the end of when the at the end of the poke, at the end of the day, there's the blue card. There's the red card, the white card, the blue card. The blue card is swiped, and it prints out a summary report. It shows exactly who the winners were on each of the, each of the machines. And the data is saved on the hard drive, it's saved on, the, on a CD-ROM, and it's also saved on a flashcard memory. We have triple redundancy. So at the end of the election, there is a precinct server. We just simply take the CD-ROM out of each of the machines, insert them into the precinct server, and that summarizes all of the information from that precinct. Once we have that, we can print out the results of that precinct. Then that information has to be transferred to Election Central. There are two ways we can do that. We could easily carry that CD to Election Central. However, if the county or the state allowed, we could send that information over a secured line or over a wireless network by simply swiping a card, send information to Election Central. So all of that data is sent to Election Central. And each of the respective precincts around the county will do that. And now that information is now at Election Central. We have that central data. Now that information needs to go to State Election Central. There's a, one, there's a server there at Election Central. Swipe one card, send information to State Election Central. And all that information is now transferred to State Election Central. Can't think of anything else. It sounds sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter Zolchenko. I'm Peter Zolchenko. I'm a director of Project Leap, legal elections in all precincts. Uh, we've been in business for. Uh, since 1971, we're the election watchdog group in Chicago. Uh, I uh, also am a longtime computer uh, user, programmer, hardware and software developer, uh, dating back to the mid 1970s. Uh, in reviewing this this show, I'm finding that uh, that what most of the vendors are doing is attempting to push technology into the uh, polling places, which doesn't necessarily, that in itself doesn't necessarily solve the problems that we're looking at in the punch card system. The punch card, the punch card technology, we'll have to admit, is, is problematic right at its core. And it, it really is, should be obsolete. We should no longer have be using the punch card technology, I agree. The main problem is the way it, its presentation, the way it's designed. You simply should not have a pea-sized uh, square representing the paper record of whom you're voting for. Furthermore, you shouldn't have a uh, four little razor, razor cuts uh, hanging between you and your selection of who you want to vote for. There are many ways to perpetrate fraud and, and uh, create uh, unintentional problems, have unintentional problems with the punch card system. So the punch card system clearly uh, should be phased out. The question is what needs to be phased in. I completely disagree. As, as much as I know about technology, uh, and as a former hacker, 
an occasional hacker today, I completely disagree with putting the highest technology into place for, uh, for uh, voting technology. I particularly think that we're not right, we're not there, if ever, uh, we're not ready to put computers into the voting booths. There is nothing that a computer can do in a voting booth, except in some ways for the disabled uh, and uh, in certain other remote circumstances, there's nothing a computer can do that a sheet of paper can't do just as well or better for virtually all voters. For those who want it, maybe sitting down at a computer might be useful, but most people want to have that eye-hand coordination between them and their ballot. When they say ballot, I don't mean, you know, I'm not talking about a chip. This is not a ballot. This is a very ephemeral, Piece of, piece of information, and I can't see anything on here. I'm not talking about storing information on a chip. I'm talking about storing information on a piece of solid atomic material. Uh, that's what makes the punch card marginally better than storing electrons for our intent, our voter intent, onto a chip of some sort, you know, a RAM chip or uh, holding it in some sort of latch, TTL latch. This is not necessarily uh, an intelligent solution. It's not, not something we should trust to computers, particularly since paper uh, provides a better solution. Here's another example of, uh, of potential for abuse. This is what they want us to use to verify that we're voters a particular voter who's eligible to be voting in this precinct, they just give us a little plastic card, mark sense. These are so easily hackable, even with encryption, that it's not it's not secure. Essentially what, what the new technology promises, what any, any technology promises, is to introduce uh, more openings into the law of what we can call uh, uh, added, added uh, potential error and fraud into a system, and that is that as, as you move away from the most rudimentary systems, which would be paper and pencil in the case of uh, voting, as you move away from the most rudimentary systems toward the more complex system, you not only don't necessarily remove the problems, the inherent problems at the, in the simplest systems, but you continue to add on more problems in the more advanced systems to the point uh, that, and particularly with high technology, the more problems you add on, the more problems you're also adding on at the, in, in levels of, of corruptibility and potential fraud. So at the base level where we have a potential a piece of paper in a polling place that can be forged in one precinct uh, with paper and pencil, when we add on punch card systems, we have printers perhaps, uh, that is printing companies and punching companies. and. Uh, and election authorities that can potentially corrupt a ballot, uh, corrupt a vote, at a larger level, so at the precinct level or at the municipal level. Um, at the, oh, you are? He's pooping. I have to go. Please, let's not poop all over our election uh, process. Are you fading out? Okay, what we have here are the Incavote voting system. It was developed by Election Data Corporation uh, for Los Angeles County. They'll be using that in Los Angeles in November. Uh, what it is very similar to the, the punch card systems that most people are familiar with. It uses almost an identical card, but there are no perforations here. And the way that it's marked is with a pen. Um, so you have a, a permanent record of the vote when you're of the voter's choices when he's through. It goes into a vote recorder that's very similar to the one that's used with the punch cards, so that requires very little uh, training to, for the new voters to get used to this new equipment. But instead of using a stylus to punch the card, you use a pen to mark the ballot. So you would turn through it as you normally would in a uh, punch card ballot. You make the marks with the pen, reach selection, turn the page and go to the next one. 
Now, I'm not going to complete this ballot so I can demonstrate the, uh, the ballot tabulator that's in the precinct. When the card is removed from the vote recorder, you can see the ink marks are on there. This would have been taken off when the ballot was handed to the voter. If there are any write-ins, they would be written on the back and this part would be kept with the ballot. But in this case, there are no write-ins, so this can be removed. And you put this in the precinct reader. And it issues, if you want to stop this, I'm sorry. I've been having, okay, so the, the printer prints out which contests were incorrectly voted. In this case, there was some undervoting. The card is rejected. And the voter's given a chance to go back and mark the ballots that he didn't mark. If, in fact, the voter says, well, I only voted for the contest where I knew the candidates and the issues, and I didn't really want to vote for these, that's why I intentionally undervoted, you can push the override here on the control panel, insert the card back into the precinct reader. The vote is then, all the correct votes are tabulated. The ones that aren't marked aren't tabulated. And you, the voter is given a thank you for voting slip. So that's basically what the system is here as far as the general voter. It also includes a, uh, an audible ballot for the visually disabled or visually impaired. And you can start that here on the screen. You can say audio ballot begin. And once the, the voter is seated and has the earphones on, then you can start the audio ballot. And he takes his earphones and listens to the instructions and then votes by pressing some uh, buttons with relief features on them, like up arrow, down arrow, and, and enter. Uh, when the voter is finished with that, um, it prints out a card that's similar in appearance to the card that was marked by the the, the, un, un, the other voters. So he has the same situation here. He has a, a paper trail that, that goes in there and is kept for an audit. This would be put into the, the ballot reader. This was a correct ballot this time, so he, the votes were counted, and he's also issued a receipt for, you know, thank you for voting. So, so if, uh, if there's an undervote, what does the uh, line voter do? Uh, he, has the, he has the option when he's finished voting over here to go back and, in fact, as he goes along, it tells him. You've only you haven't voted for this contest. Do you want to go back and okay. vote? So the, the blind voter is uh, coached all the way through and, and alerted to any over. It won't let him overvote. If he tries to overvote, it'll say you you know you've already made a selection that you like to deselect and, and make another selection. So he has those opportunities. And the dollar bill. The receipt that's printed over there has a little bit different identification code. So if he has an intentionally undervoted, this um, computer knows it and it, it'll just it'll record the votes that are correct and, and uh, not record the undervoted. So that's how that works. This also can we can also hook up to this precinct controller a touchscreen system which is over here. So you could have. If you wanted to move to touch screens later on when they work at all the issues as far as paper trails and security and things like that, then you could still use this precinct controller, but you could replace the, the mark sense voting units with touch screen. Mm -hmm. so it gives you a nice uh, upgrade path that's completely seamless and 100% compatible software. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Are these presently in use? No, uh, the Incavote portion of it's going to be used in California in Los Angeles County in November. Mm -hmm. uh, they won't be read at the precinct level. They'll be sent to county headquarters. But they'll be read in high-speed readers. Uh, this precinct controller and all the associated software is going to go through SysTest well, national certification in November. So we're looking forward to early next year having this stuff. Mm -hmm. All uh, certified and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Sorry about the. <laughs>
the interrupt there in the middle. Hi, uh, my name is John Gochi. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of our solution for the voting uh, woes of uh, the country. Uh, we have, uh, first thing we did is we've eliminated the paperwork you have to do when you go check in uh, the voter application. So we've uh, come up with a totally paperless solution. So now when you go to vote, you would take your state ID, driver's license, or your, uh, your voter registration card, and you would simply present it to the, the judge, the election judge, and the election judge would take your information and would swipe it and your application with your name, address would pop up here. But if you don't have any identification, uh, you would just give them your name. Angel, you want to type in? So, uh, why don't you type in Summers? So basically, um, is it still recording? So basically, you would, uh, you would type in your name on here, and then we would find your application, and that's what he's doing right now. And there's no Summers in the system, so we gotta, so it's already been used. So basically, uh, let's say uh, Melissa Summers here. So you hit check in, and then you would have to get the signature. So what you do is just go. So this becomes part of the voter record. So now the clerk already, or the judge, now has a record of who voted in what election. So now what we do is we create a card that loads your ballot that you get to vote in. And let's we'll try a different card. So basically it shows that you're checked in now. So you take your card and you go to vote. And then when you come here, you do like the picture. I'm not going to put the headphones on, I don't want you to hear. Please put your headphones on for privacy. You may vote a straight, split, or mixed. You are about to vote for Governor and Lieutenant Governor. You may you have voted for Jennifer M. Granholm. You have voted for Jennifer M. Granholm. You are about to vote for Secretary of State. You have voted for... You have declined... You have voted for, you have voted for, you are about to vote right for. In. Type the name of the person for whom you want to vote. Press a, you have voted for, right, you have voted for a write-in candidate. You have voted for, you have voted for, you are now entering the proposal section of the ballot. The proposal text will be the same size as the you are about to vote on. Please confirm your vote in favor of this proposal by pressing. You have voted yes on. You are about to vote on. Please confirm your vote in favor. You have voted yes. You have reached the end of the ballot. Each of your votes is listed on the left side of the screen. You can go back to change. change. Any vote. Press the corresponding change vote button. On the you are about to. You have voted for. You have declined. You have voted for. You have voted for. You have reached the end of the ballot. Each of your votes is listed on the left side of the screen. Please confirm that you have finished voting. Your votes have been recorded. Thank Simple. you for voting. Mm -hmm. That's basically the system. We, we created something that was easy for the clerk. It saved her a lot of work and, and automated the process. And we created something that's easy for people to use. Um, and there's people out there that avoid voting because they can't read or, you know, uh, they grew up at a, at a, in, a, in a tough time where maybe they, they couldn't, you know, had a family farm or something and, you know, there's still people out there that had to work the farm and couldn't get the education, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily stupid. Uh, and, and we wanted to create a system that anybody that wanted or was willing to go out there and vote and had the right to vote 
ought to be able to vote, and that's kind of what we came up with. So it's really up to the people. If they like the system and find it easy, you need to contact your elected officials and let them know about it. Really, power's in your hands. You just got to get active and get involved. Thank you. Uh, how do the votes get from the machine to the county? Uh, the votes from the machine, This, the, every one of these is connected to uh, the precinct level machine. Uh, currently, uh, Chicago uh, basically does it wirelessly, transfers the totals wirelessly to their central count location. And that's currently the way it would be done too. We can conform our system to transfer the totals wirelessly to the central locating, or it can be done through a virtual private network or you can burn them on the disc and hand deliver them, however it is you wanted to do it. Okay, how about a paper trail? Uh, it does print an uh, actual paper trail. Uh, when you're done voting, when you hit finish voting, it'll actually print uh, a, a ballot that with all your choices, and then you take that with you on your way out and you drop that in the ballot box, and that is used as a safety net to make sure that the way you voted in the machine is actually the way it printed. And then if there's, there, I believe Chicago uh, or Cook County in general is going to recount a certain number of precincts by law. They have to do the paper recount and they check those totals. And if everything comes up uh, rosy, then we're all in good shape. You say the voter himself takes the ballot, the paper yes. ballot, and deposits it? The voter himself takes the ballot and, and deposits in the ballot box. Uh, there's solutions out there where you can create it, where the voter can see it, but can't t you know can't touch it. it it does serve some positive purposes but it's really an expensive solution and uh, we think the best way to do it is let the voter feel it look at it make sure it's right and if they're confident that that's the way they wanted to vote they walk out and deposit it in the ballot box like we've always done it the problem hasn't been the voter taking it from here and dropping it here it's been that they've made mistakes and it's spoiled their ballots and then the technology with computers has helped eliminate overvoting you can't overvote on the system you can undervote on it if you don't want to vote for a particular office you don't have to vote but it will at least remind you and say hey you sure you want to not vote for this office and you have to physically hit it against it and yeah i don't wish to vote so uh, Basically, the problem has been in voting. It's not the people that the problem is. It's the way that they've been doing voting. I mean, I have faith in people that once this machine prints the results, they're going to take their ballot and they're going to drop it in the ballot box. There'll also be somebody there to make sure that they don't walk out with that with that particular uh, ballot. Otherwise, it won't get counted in the recount. But the computers does keep track of it. And that paper trail is just to make sure everything is uh, kosher, as they say. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope you guys edited a little bit.